Lord Cutglass, in his kitchen full of time, squats down alone to a dog dish marked Fido of peppery fish scraps and listens to the voices of his 66 clocks, one for each year of his loony age, and watches with love their black and white moony, loud-lipped faces talking the earth away. Slow clocks, quick clocks, pendulum, heart knocks, china, alarm, grandfather, cuckoo, clocks shaped like Noah's whirring ark, clocks that bicker in marble ships, clocks in the wombs of glass women, hourglass chambers, to wit to woo clocks, clocks that pluck tunes, Vesuvius clocks, all black bells and lava, Niagara clocks that cataract their ticks, old time weeping clocks with ebony beards, clocks with no hands forever drumming out time without ever knowing what time it is. 66 singers are all set at different hours. Lord Cutglass lives in a house and a life at siege. Any minute or dark day now, the unknown enemy will loot and savage downhill. But they will not catch him napping. 66 different times in his fish slimy kitchen. Ping, strike, tick, chime. The lust and lilt and lather and emerald breeze and crackle of the bird praise and body of spring with its breasts full of rivering may milk means to that lordly fishhead nibbler nothing but another nearness to the tribes and navies of the last black day who'll sear and pillage down Armageddon Hill to his double locked, rusty shuttered, tick tock, dust scrabbled shack at the bottom of the town that has fallen head over bells in love. Polly hums and longs. Now when farmer's boys on the first fair day come down from the hills to drink and be gay, before the sun sinks I'll lie there in their arms for their good bad boys from the lonely farms. But I always think as we tumble Sunny, slow, lulling afternoon yawns and moons through the dozy town. The sea lolls, laps, and idles in with fishes sleeping in its lap. The meadows still a Sunday, the shut-eyed tasseled bulls, the goat and daisy dingles nap happy and lazy, the dumb duck ponds smooth. Clouds sag and pillow on Haregid Hill. Pigs grunt in a wet wallow bath and smile as they snort and dream. They dream of the acorn swill of the world, the rooting for pig fruit, the bagpipe dugs of the mother sow, the squeal and snuffle of yeses of the women pigs in rut. They mud bask and snout in the pig-loving sun. Their tails curl. They rollick and slobber and snore the deep, smug, after-swill sleep. Donkeys angelically drowse on donkey down. Persons with manners. Snaps Mrs. Cole Pugh. Do not nod the table. Mr. Pugh cringes awake. He puts on a soft, soaping smile. It is sad and grey under his nicotine, egg yellow, goopy, walrus, Victorian moustache, worn thick and long, in memory of Dr. Crippen. You should wait till you retire to your staff says Mrs. Pugh, sweet as a razor. His fawning, measly quarter smile freezes. Sly and silent, he foxes into his chemist's den, and there, in a hiss and prussic circle of cauldrons and files, brimful with pox and the black bed, cooks up a fricassee of deadly nightshade, nicotine, hot frog, cyanide and bat spit, for his needling, stalactite hag and bed nag of a poker-backed nutcracker wife. I beg your pardon, my dear, he murmurs with a wheedle. Captain Cat, at his window thrown wide to the sun, and the clippered seas he sailed long ago when his eyes were blue and bright,
slumbers and voyages, earring and rolling. I love you, rosy probert tattooed on his belly. He brawls with broken bottles in the fug and babel of the dark dock bars, roves with a herd of short and good time cows in every naughty port, and twines and souses with the drowned and blousy breasted dead. He weeps as he sleeps and sails. One voice of all he remembers most dearly as his dream buckets down. Lazy early Rosie with a flaxen thatch, whom he shared with Tom Fred the donkey man and many another seaman.